Hi, this is Dr. Quentin and welcome you to my channel. In our video today, we're going to look at the build-up of electrons in the shells. Then we're also going to look at the noble gases, the valence number, and the electron configuration. That and further do the same two things. In the previous lesson, we had actually looked at the periods as well as the groups that are found on the periodic table. So now we had said that the number of shells are drawn according to the period where an element is found. So if an element is found in period three, the element will have three shells. The first shell, which happens to be nearest to the shell, is filled when it has two electrons. The second shell from the nucleus is filled when it has eight electrons. The third shell is filled when it has 18 electrons. But once the first eight electrons are in place, the next two electrons go to the fourth shell before the third shell continues to fill up. How about noble gases? So noble gases are actually the elements in group eight. So those elements that are in group eight are called noble gases. They all have filled outer shells. Meaning they have the maximum of eight electrons. Noble gases do not form bonds because they do not have electrons available to take part in bonding. This makes the noble gases very stable. Noble gases are monatomic. They occur naturally as single atoms. Okay, so now let's look at valence number. What is valence number? So valence number is actually the number of electrons that an, that an atom gains or loses to acquire stable noble gas electron arrangement. So the implication here is that each and every atom seeks stability. Now for it to be stable, it has to have an electron arrangement like that of those elements that are found in group eight, which are called noble gases. Those that have the outer shells that are filled to the brain. Now this valence number is also known as the combining power of an atom. Now elements, elements that have one, two, three valence electrons tend to lose their, those electrons. For example, aluminium's valence number is three. Then the four valence electrons tend to share those electrons. For example, carbon's valence number is four. So now those atoms that have five to seven valence electrons tend to gain electrons to complete the noble gas configuration. For example, oxygen valence number is two. Why is it two? Because in the outer shell, there are six electrons. So now it only needs two more electrons for it to reach stability, for it to have a configuration like that of noble gases. It only needs two, so it will accept two from other elements that it happens to to be reacted with. Fluorine's valence number is one, meaning that in the outer shell, there are seven electrons, so it only leaves a top up of one electron for it to have that stability. Now, few of the outermost shells have a valence number of zero. I mentioned of this in the earlier slide, say that noble gases have zero valence electrons, meaning they are stable and they don't share, they don't accept. That's more. Let's look at electron configuration. So this is how the electrons are actually configured or they are arranged in the shells. So now we can do this. We can show the electronic configuration by either writing the number of electrons in each shell 
Okay, so if let's say we have sodium, sodium which is here, okay, with the mass number 23, and it has the proton number 11. But what I want you to remember is that the proton number actually denotes it denotes uh, the number of protons, and uh, the, the number of protons always matches with the number of electrons. So if we know the proton number, then we have also known the number of electrons. So if there are 11 electrons, let me draw this so that you see how this is done. Uh, okay, we have the first shell, we have the second shell, let's check, let's check. So what do we have, and then we can also have the third shell. So now what it is is the first shell, okay, let me, let me, let me also draw the, the nucleus there. So this one is the nucleus. So the first shell accommodates the maximum of two electrons. One, two. And then the second shell from the nucleus accommodates a maximum of eight electrons. One, two, three, then we have four, then five, six, and we have seven. We are using crosses, eight. So these these eight electrons plus these two that makes that makes a ten. Then we'll have another one since it has eleven protons then we have 11 electrons so now we have the total number of the electrons that are there in sodium so now if we this is how we can show this this is one where we can actually show the electron configuration of sodium so now if we were to write we use figures now that's one way the other way is by by actually showing the number of electrons that are actually accommodated in the first shell so that is one so we have two and then we have eight okay we have eight then we have one in the outer shell so this one since it is a one it's it's actually within the the first group of atoms those that have one two three so normally these atoms normally lose whenever they happen to take part in any chemical reaction, when they are reacted with other substances, what they do is they actually lose the electrons. This, is, this one, uh, they are seeking stability. So this one will actually lose that electron. At the moment it loses an electron, it becomes an ion. So now I've shown you the two ways in which we can actually show electronic configuration. That is by actually drawing. Now, is at times we may not choose crosses like I have done here. You may as well use dots like in this example, which is at the bottom here. And so now that's how it is. Let's check out if we, if you are able to do what I've just demonstrated. Okay, so that's the one which is shown here, using circles and electrons. That's the one I was just doing. Let's look at the here. Let's pick on, let's pick on oxygen. You've seen oxygen is in, is, is in, uh, it's in group six. Okay, so now oxygen is in group six, meaning that there are, there are six, six valence electrons okay so now there are actually six electrons in the outer shell so the valence electron the valence electron is actually two because it only needs two more for it for it to 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 attain stability now let me see if i can do something here we 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 actually write the 
a configuration here. Let me check if I can change the color here so that I can use something that will be vivid enough. So now, since it has uh, how many? It has eight electrons. So what we'll do is I will draw, say, okay, we have that shell. Then we have this shell. Let's see if we can make use of the knowledge that we had used. This one is in group, uh, oxygen is in group six, group six, meaning there'll be six, six uh, electrons in the outer shell. And it's in group, it's in period, a second, that's one, it's in period two, meaning that there will be two shells, okay? So now the first, the first, the first, the uh, first, the first shell will have the maximum of two electrons. So the first one is that one. Then we have the second one there. Bearing in mind that in the middle here, we ought to have the nucleus. So now from there, we can now have one. Then we have two. Then we have three. Then we have four okay we have five and we have six uh, let's check out that one two three four five six so this one ought to have been here so we have to have six electrons one two three four five six plus those two that actually add up to eight they add up to eight Okay, so now we can now use the figures. That's one of showing the electronic configuration of oxygen. So now it has, so now for it to be stable, it will only accept two more, and then there will, there will be eight electrons in the outer shell. So now if we were to go by using figures now, say, okay, the electronic configuration of oxygen is a two and a six. Well, that's how we do it. Friends, if you've liked the video, I urge you to go ahead and, uh, and uh, smash the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. And then leave a comment in the comment section. And uh, share the video with as many people as you can. Thank you so much. Stay blessed.